I'd like to welcome you um, to this first interview of some of our former students on the Viktor Frankl Mind, Body and Soul Trauma Ring Life Coaching Program. And we have with us today, Vanessa Chesters, who graduated our program in May of 2021. And we brought her on today just talk, talking a bit about her experience in life and what brought her to the course and some of the things she learned on the course. So Vanessa, why don't we start with your very interesting story that kind of predated you joining this course. Maybe you can talk a bit about that with our audience. Sure, thank you um, for the introduction. Yes, um, so I would say what intrigued me to this course was really um, Man's Search for Meaning, Viktor Frankl's uh, book. When I was searching for the, for the course, I was looking for trauma response and I was looking for um, also something that could help me with my own situation and then also others. And um, in terms of what um, draw, drew me here, the experience that happened prior to the course, um, I had my own trauma experience where um, I, and this, the reason why I mentioned the book is because it was quite pinnacle in my life as I went through my trauma experience. So um, I ended up going on a family vacation and there was 13 of us on the family vacation in Florida. Um, we were there for a Disney experience and um, the evening um, arriving there, we were all sitting by the pool and I dove into the pool and mis misjudged the depth of the pool and ended up um, hitting the bottom of the pool with my head and then coming up from the pool, um, coming up from the dive, um, with later finding out that I had a C1 fracture. So the events that followed that were really uh, quite traumatic, um, you know, uh, leaving my two young tod toddlers at the time and heading down to the hospital and, um, you know, day two of a two week trip, um, especially in the US. Um, I am a Canadian citizen, so it was also a, a scary experience at that. Um, discovered that, um, you know, it was a C1 fracture. And for those of you that don't know what that means, um, essentially it's called the hangman's fracture. So um, most people end up um, dying immediately from that kind of uh, break. Um, and so there were a ser series of events that kind of followed or transpired. And I won't go into a whole bunch of details regarding them, but um, I was soon in a, a halo and it's a eight pound metal contraption where you have uh, four pin sites in various parts of your skull uh, for it to be stabilized and it was to be on for 80 days and so the reason why i mentioned the victor frankel book man's search for meaning is that it was one of those books that impressioned me on in the direst circumstances um, man's ability to get through those circumstances on the basis of perspective um, is quite significant. And I, I, I'm not going to, you know, go into details about the book because that's really, I think, for your students to unpack themselves. But um, it helped me realize that in in those difficulties, there's hope, and it really comes down to how you perceive the experience. And so there's a number of other pieces that took shape through that, um, like my faith and, um, but I would say too that I chose to concentrate on what was working, not what wasn't working. So, um, you know, if I had some pain going on, I chose to focus on, I'm so lucky that I'm here for a second day at life and I'm here to help my toddlers, you know, get up in the morning and give them breakfast, as an example. Um, well, what was going on in your mind at that moment, you realized you had a C1 break and you learned about what happens to a lot of people. And you, I guess you were unsure at that point what was gonna be at that moment. Yeah, it was a very scary moment. I mean, I had my children in bed that night at home, knowing they were, there were so many things that were going through my mind. I wasn't gonna be there for them in the morning. The next day I was like, if they did see me in the next few days, I would look significantly different. Um, I had compression on my uh, spine and then my, my throat. So I couldn't talk very well. Um, 
And it was just this realization that that was a near, like that was a near death experience. Like in my mind, I was like, I can't believe that happened. And at first there was a lot of blame that, that I went through in terms of like, how could I have done that? How did I not misjudge the death? And then I realized too, I guess it's, I also realized that I was, I was still here for a reason. There was a purpose. Um, now I wasn't calm like that. That's for sure. When I was in the hospital and all this happened, I wasn't calm because the processing of all those things at the same time almost caused reversion to a childlike state at first until I could break it into like small pieces of like, okay, you know, how am I going to get through this once I have the halo on? What am I going to say to my kids? How am I going to project to them the resiliency? And I think that's the only word that I can think in my mind that describes what I wanted to show them in my scenario. Um, because the first time, and it's forever in, uh, burnt into my mind, when my um, three-year-old came to see me in the hospital, he was immediately in a fear-based state. You could see it all over his face. He sees his mother in a metal contraption, this halo, um, laying in a, a, a medical bed and trying to process what's happened. He didn't even really know what was going on. Let's, let's be real about that. And then my five-year-old just completely not knowing what to say either. And in order to help them feel comfortable, at the time, the Transformers movie was such a big hit. So this is a number of years ago. So I said to them, you know, mom's doing okay. Now I was in a lot of pain, but I didn't tell them that. Um, but guess what the cool thing is? You'll be able to show me at show and tell um, to, your, to your class. I'm going to be like a transformer. Like that's what this is. It's like a metal contraption, like transformers. And then they kind of, their faces softened and they became more comfortable with the circumstance because I was trying to relate to something that would resonate with them and not thinking about how I was feeling, more so putting myself in their shoes. But I would say that actually helped me to move forward because I, I wanted to show them that no matter what we go through in life, it's how we deal with it that makes the difference. What we choose to focus on versus what we don't focus on makes the difference. And we have that power in ourselves to do that. And this is what Viktor Frankl talks about in Man's Search for Meeting. He says that there are times in life you're going to be facing ines inescapable suffering. And the only thing you could change in that moment is yourself. And you change your attitude towards a situation. So that seemed to run true with you at that moment. And also the other point is that you, Frankl also talks about something called hyper-reflection, reflection, reflecting too much on oneself. And at that moment, you just mentioned something very powerful is that you started de-reflecting or reflecting on something outside of yourself. Did that give you the strength to continue? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, any, anyone that's a parent would know this. Um, you want to, you want to be there for your children and you want to also show them strength at various times um, because they learn through us. And so I would say, you know, for them more than anything, I wanted to show them resiliency and how I could get through this and what what strategies I would take. And it's so interesting because my oldest son who is now turning 17 just wrote um, a paper on his traumatic experiences in his life. And one of them was seeing his, his mom go through this experience, but what he noted is what he learned was that I learned from my mom that I can I can get through anything, anything that's difficult. She showed me that. I'm not using his exact words, but that was the essence of it. And um, I realized in reading that, like, even though they were little children at the time, like five and three, it was a powerful experience for them too, in that way. So yeah, I mean, this just happened two days ago that I read his essay and I was just, you know, because when they're that young, you don't, you don't know what, what is left with them. So yeah, that was really interesting.
Viktor Frankl talks about in his books that he was in the concentration camps and at times he was dying either on a death march or he was he had typhus, he had 103, 104 fever, he was gonna die if he fell asleep. And to stay awake or to, to not fall in, in the death marches, because if you fell in the death march, you'd be shot. He imagined himself fulfilling some meaning in the future. You know, he was either going to teach the psychology of the concentration camp to his students when he would be freed. He didn't know if he'd be free, but imagine he'd be free. He at times would speak to his wife, who, who he found out only afterwards was murdered by, in Auschwitz by the Nazis. So it seems to be you also were doing that. You were looking at things greater than yourself at that moment to gain the strength to continue. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I would say so for sure. And then the sense of purpose um, is the other component, I think, that comes up in what you were just talking about, like seeing a sense of purpose beyond ourselves. When I went through this circumstance, as you can imagine, there's not a lot of people to talk to that survive this circumstance. Like, I think the statistics are like 50% of individuals survive. And of that 50%, a small population can walk. Most of them are para quadriplegics. Like Christopher Reeves is a good example of the hangman's fracture. Um, and so there was no one to talk to or compare my experience to. So I went on this mass search to find someone through the web and found um sandy scott is his name actually and he lives in florida um he was a bicycle rider in his 70s that went head over uh tea kettle on his bike and fractured his neck and so i started having conversations with him and then i realized that i don't want others to go through this experience in the same way that i have in feeling like are there answers is there hope how do we find hope in this? And that's when I set up the Broken Neck Survivor support page on Facebook um, as a means to start reaching out to others and helping them through the experience. And I think now there's probably over 2,000 people there. And it's, 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 it's really a place where people can, can meet. And the whole, whole essence of it is positive reinforcement that you do have control of what's going on in your response to the circumstance. That's the only thing that you have control of. And then your Facebook, this is your Facebook page. Are you sharing with your, uh, the people that are watching this, are you sharing uh, personal stories, personal, are you commenting yes. on their comments or you're engaging people in this? Area? Yes. Engaging people in that audience. And there, there is, you know, you know, when we were going through the course, for instance, um, when you started sharing some of the videos on, um, you know, getting past your past and the body keeps score. And when we went through some of those materials, I wanted to make sure that I'm also giving back to that audience some additional um, resources to refer to with their trauma experiences. Now it's, you know, we're not, I'm not a medical professional. That's something that's, that I cite there, but it's really an area where we can enable, equip, and then support um, with a positive framework um you, you know you 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 find or i've found in the years that i've managed that it's now 10 years that um there is this 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 grouping of people that can get into this thought process of victimization where like nothing's good and two people can have the same injury but dependent on how they choose to respond to the circumstance largely affects their outcomes and, and I can see that happening because those that are like, this isn't good, I have so much pain, and they talk about the pain all the time. Well, of course, the pain's gonna amplify. The more you concentrate on it, the worse it gets. And I know that myself because my, my C1 has never fused together. So the C1 is like the circular um, vertebrae that stabilizes your skull and the rest of your spine. My right side is still fractured and it's worse off than it was post-injury but would you ever be able to tell by looking at me that I still have a broken neck no you know um and yes I have chronic pain but I choose not to focus on that um have I changed the way I live no because I can't live in I don't want to live in fear so I still go skiing I still do things that I would have done before um the accident because I choose I choose hope I choose faith I don't choose fear mm -hmm. very well said and Viktor Frankl says in spite of my condition 
or despite my condition, I choose to connect to something greater than myself, something outside of myself, an experience out of myself, beyond myself, a person beyond myself, some, something beyond myself. And that's what he talks about a lot. And that actually kept him alive in Auschwitz for several years is imagining himself in situations well beyond himself or fulfilling some meaning. In your case, it was being there for your family. In your case, it was living a life in spite of your pain, which keeps you moving forward, correct? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's a very good summary of that. Yeah. That's wonderful. Now, I remember in our program together, the Mind, Body, Soul program, um, I played a video of one of Viktor Frankl's students, Jerry Long. And if you remember that video, and it's available on YouTube, I'll link it for the viewers as well. Um, I fell was in a similar situation as you. I don't know if it was a C1 break, but he was a sportsman. I think he was going to be a baseball player or something like that. And he dove and he also broke his neck. And he was a paraplegic or quadriplegic, as you saw in the video. And um, he says he realized, not knowing much about the Holocaust, not even hearing about Viktor Frankl originally, and then reading Viktor Frankl, he said that he was experiencing and thinking the same things that Frankl was thinking about in the camps uh, when he was sitting there in that bed and his whole career was finished and he didn't know what he was going to live for. And it turns out that Jerry Long um, went on to do a degree in psychology and dedicate his life to helping other people that were facing inescapable suffering by changing their attitude. And the name of that video is, and this is a quote from Jerry Long, I broke my neck, but it did not break me. I think that it's important to remember my attitude adoption and the logotherapy that I employed initially was without any knowledge of logotherapy. I had not read any books and I had no acquaintance with it, but intuitively, <clears throat> I modified my attitude toward the situation. In one particular line that, that Dr. Frankel quotes fairly often, I broke my neck, it didn't break me. I had a physical constraint that I had to deal with over which I could not change. I had no ability to suddenly walk again. However, I did have the ability to choose to live and at least attempt a meaningful life in spite of that physical disability. I think that substantiates uh, your theory that within uh, the human being is this innate searching for meaning. And it sounds like that's what you were doing, Jerry. And then when you read Dr. Frankel's work, it all fit together. This, it, this was exactly how you had been thinking. Did you it, have that feeling? It began feeling? to fit together. And as I've written, when I read his book, I was overcome with a sense of deja vu. Mm -hmm. Because several times, many times, he spoke of reactions and the way he felt and the way he interpreted his experiences in the concentration camps. And repeatedly were the times when I identified personally, I felt the exact same way when I lay in that hospital bed as he did when he was in that concentration camp. Mm -hmm. Can you reflect on that saying for a minute, what that meant for you personally as well, that it didn't break you? Yeah, no, that's, you know, definitely when I watched that video, because you, you did share it even with me before the class, I, I was, there were so many similarities in terms of how he was discussing his experience to what I was feeling or I felt through the, the process. And um, it's so true because there was a physical event that happened. We can label it as a trauma event. And, you know, there's a connotation with trauma that often comes across as negative, but I would say in that circumstance, like it actually taught me more about myself, more about resiliency, more about, what are my values that are core to me and what are my motivators in life and what is my purpose for being here? And all of those pieces, it almost felt like they all came together through a difficult experience. And so, you know, you made mention like my family, like that is such a huge piece for me. Um, if I can equip my kids, in a way for them to realize how powerful the mind is, how powerful the mind body connection is. Um, and you go through this so well in your course, like, and that's a huge takeaway for me too, um, because your mind affects the response that goes on in your body. And, you know, we have all these outside things going on around us in the world today. Like there's no doubt there's more than there's more challenges that we see now that we all have this access to the to the web and whatnot. But 
again, there's also most, more opportunities. I would have never met you. I would have never come to your to your course and gotten um, the enriched experience that I, I did through interacting with the people in that course. And so my belief is it didn't break me and it was a gift. The experience was a gift. It was a gift in that it helped me to enrich my life and now helps me in circumstances to help others with how to get through something difficult by changing your mindset. I remember when uh, you played a video for us on the class as well. I think it's available on your Facebook page on Monday, or on your website of you uh, taking off your halo, that moment where you took off your halo. Um, what were you thinking about then when you were about to, it was, you said 80 days later. Yes. Um, yeah, that, that video, um, is on YouTube. Um, if you search nest chesters and C1 fracture, you'll find it. Um, it, it, okay. That day I didn't know the halo was halo was coming off. I was hoping it was coming off because some of the most basic things that I took for granted like hugging my children as an example, like I couldn't actually hug them and have that human touch, that human connection. That was one of the first things I was gonna do as soon as that halo came off because I didn't realize how I took for granted some basic basic things that we we, we all think are just, we take, I mean, you interact with your family every day, you hug, you say, I love you. But then that physical interaction when you don't have it is something that you just long for. And so when the halo came off or they told me it was coming off, I was feeling this intense um, feeling of almost like, I can't wait for this freedom that I'm going to have. And what am I going to do with that freedom? And, and then also fear, fear was coming into my brain too. Like, what does this mean for me now that the halo is coming off? Well, leading up to the halo coming off, the conversation with my doctor, who was amazing, such a great physician, he had told me that the break was worse off than pre-halo. So instead of it healing as, as, as it should have, it actually had displaced way more. And he said, but we're still taking the halo off today. And in my mind, I was like, well, why? Because it's not better. But he said, based on the outcomes I'm seeing from you, I have no concerns. So I had mixed emotions going in because I was like, how could I have spent 80 days in this halo that felt like jail? And there was like nothing physically that healed. But then when it came off and you would see by the video, there was this intense emotion right? Where I was crying and, and I just can't explain it all because it's just a moment where you're like feeling freedom and fear at the same time, gratitude and trying to let go of what was at the same time. And then, yeah, the first thing that I did right after was I hugged my, my kids and it was just such a wonderful feeling of, appreciation and gratitude for getting a second chance at life really and, and one of the things we talk about in the program is the mind body soul connection which we referred to several times today um, we begin with uh, somatic experiencing we get in touch with our somatic internal self our nervous system we learn how to uh, pendulate it's an expression from peter levine how to move gently out of states of tension and so on uh, after we work with somatic experiencing, posture, noticing one's physical self, we then move on to um, the narrative about one's trauma, uh, telling the story cognitive, co co cohesive, cohesive, cohesively. And uh, after we do that, we then move on to the soul level where we talk about spirit, the human spirit. It sounds like you experienced or we went through all these three phases. Can you talk a bit about that? the somatic self getting over an injury in your C1, the thought process, and then the spirituality of how you put this together for yourself? Yeah, that's a big question. I feel like there's a physical aspect of when you go through an event that affects your body and affects what you perceive normal to be. Like everyday, you know, walking or 
talking or having vision, the things that we all, for, for all of us that have these things, we sometimes take these, these things for granted. And then when something happens to take some of those physical pieces away from us, or we feel like it's an event that has impacted those things. Um, and for me specifically, I, I didn't see it as a bad thing. I saw it as a good thing, in fact, because it helped me be more aware of the power that goes along with perspective. Um, and then also in that reflection of the times when I might have thought I was a victim in a circumstance when all in all reality, I wasn't. That was what my mindset was. And so the book, as I talked about at the beginning of this, was so impactful to me because I feel like ten, a few years before me having this injury, I remembered that Viktor Frankl book and what he went through and how he was, what motivated him to push through and the persistence to get through his experience and come out of it in the end. For me, that, that was the same, the, same, the same type of thing. I was like, he went through something way worse than what I'm going through right now. And if he can get through that, I can get through this with a, with a positive mindset. Um, yeah. And then pushing through it and then just realizing that, you know, faith is a huge component of it too, because it's, 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 it's to have an, un, um, a subconscious, um, connection to something greater than ourselves. And that is another piece for me when I think about this experience, because if I can relate it to some imagery, when you drop a, a rock in the water, it has ripple effects, right? And I didn't realize the extent of those ripple effects until now I look back, you know, 11 years later, and I can see that you know, there's 2,500 people on the Broken Neck Survivor support page. I've had people contact me and say, I'm so thankful, you know, that I had someone to talk to and I realized that like life gets better. Um, and, you know, <laughs> I don't, if there's something greater than ourselves that knows that these experiences or guides these experiences to a greater good. And I feel like it's a choice honestly, that we each have. And that's where the power of choice comes into play. And yeah, I don't know if that all makes sense. I know it's kind of all over the place, but um, yeah, that's, that's basically. I mean, you, you really did what Frankel was talking about is very profoundly and very deeply work on attitudinally changing your attitude towards your situation. And what's also remarkable about you and your story is how you convey this to your audience, because what you talk about really is one of the most powerful aspects of coaching, I believe, is helping people find something greater than themselves on one level. And two is this, this type of pervasive uh, optimism that you share with them, which is very calm and very gentle. And many people that my clients and people that I've trained to work with other clients have said it was, the attitudes of the coach or the therapist and the optimism they imbued, which is one of the most powerful points of their healing. That that's really profound. Yeah. I would say, um, I don't, I'm humbled by hearing you say that. Um, and I would say that I, I choose to see the light in, instead of the darkness and, I, I do that every day. And I think that that's a choice that we all have every day in terms of, you know, gratitude and, and focus. If we all choose to focus on the good versus the bad, uh, life, life flows a lot better, you know, and uh, in any way that I can support or help someone um, to find their light, um, I feel like that's truly what purpose is. That's why we're all here. It's the most basic concepts that we all know, you know, love your own self and love others as you would love yourself. And uh, I just feel super thankful that I'm here to be able to do that. 
Such a remarkable story, Vanessa. And I want to tell you, as you're speaking, I actually feel myself healing inside. I've never really said that to anybody. Oh. And so I want to thank you for that gift you're giving, oh. like listening to you, your story, how you overcame for me um, is on a very on a personal and extremely helpful as well. And, oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That, that, that is such amazing feedback. Thank you so much. And just as we close off now, just tell me a bit about having been through the 15 week program, the trauma healing program. Um, what have you been using with your people that you're meeting, your audience, let's say your clients since the course is over, which things that stick out in your mind are the tools that you're using? The, the pendulum uh, um, piece is quite good because I feel like that, that, is a, that is a situation where you can like try to change change your by employing that 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 tactic you can change your thinking and change how your body feels and i feel like that's immediate that's like such a strong that was such a huge learning for me in your course um the tools that you give through your course i think are impeccable i feel like i'm still going through everything because you're learning everything at such a fast rate that I'm still unpacking um, some of that information that you equip us all to be able to basically independently coach people. Um, and so I like, I really enjoy that because the coaching is not about, it's about the person and supporting them and them figuring things out and how you, you develop that program. It equips individuals to be able to start their own coaching practice should they choose to. I'm still unpacking that. Um, Getting Past Your Past is a book that you had recommended and The Body Keeps Score. Uh, in the course, I'm still reading those. Um, so the breathing and um, the breathing techniques and the video of the, I'm trying to think of the, the, the breathing technique that you did live with us, um, the name of it, I'm probably forgetting the it. Vu, the VU breathing technique? Yes, that with the vagus nerve and that, that is such a huge thing. I did that at the supper table one night with my family. They kind of thought I was a bit like crazy, I think, but I'm like, just try it. Like, try it. You, it calms you right down. So those are just some tangible things, things that I can think of off the top. And then just the ability to network and learn from people like yourself that have years and years of like experience and expertise. Um, that's, that was very enriching for me as well. But it's so wonderful. So I want to wish you, uh, we just celebrated the Jewish New Year. I want to wish you a good good year, a good new year for you, for your family, for your future, for your neck and your back. And, uh, you know, please stay in touch uh, in future programs. If you'd like to come back and join us again, we'd love to have you. For sure. And thank you so much, so much for, for spending time and, and uh, inspiring me as well. I really appreciate it. Wonderful. Okay. Take care. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye.